Well, college football has officially started over in Pullman. The Cougs are gearing up to take on San Jose State University at Martin Stadium tonight. Kickoff is at 8 o'clock. Well, tonight also the first Coug home game since WSU quarterback Tyler Holinsky took his own life in January. The team will honor Holinsky this season by wearing his number on their helmets. They're also keeping up with his locker. And we are taking a live look at Mardian Stadium. Well, we will be taking a live look soon where Kremtu's Darnay Tripp and Mark Hanrahan are soaking in all the excitement tonight. Darnay, Mark, how's it going down there? Yeah, Kira, shaping up to be a beautiful and certainly a memorable evening mm -hmm. here on the Palouse. The first Cougar football Saturday of the season here in Pullman as they get ready to take on San Jose State. A little bit quiet here just outside Martin Stadium with that 8 o'clock kickoff, but that will certainly change in the coming hours. Joined mm -hmm. by Mark Hanrahan for what is certainly will be a evening of college football unlike any they've experienced. It'll be memorable for sure. For all intents and purposes, Tyler Holinsky was supposed to be leading the air raid offense uh, here at Martin Stadium. Of course, that all changed back in February, back in January. Rather, his family has been on a mission since then to keep his memory and his legacy alive. They started the Holinsky's Hope Foundation to raise awareness for things like depression and mental health issues. Also today before game at eight o'clock tonight, that's when the kickoff is. They will raise the Cougar flag and I had a chance to talk to Tyler's mom about what that experience will be like. Take a listen. Kickoffs at eight o'clock tonight and you and your family are going to raise the Cougar flag at Martin Stadium. What do you imagine that might be like? Emotional. I'm sure it will be. Um, we have a big family here, so there'll be a lot of us standing around the flag. Um, I think I will look out into the stands. I know there's going to be a lot of tighter flags, the rally towels. Um, and I th know I'm going to hear a lot of cheering, a lot of love, and a lot of support. And that support is what has got us putting one foot in front of the other the past seven months. From the outside looking in, it looks like the WSU community has, has embraced you and your family. Um, has, has that been the case for you guys? It has. Mm -hmm. Coug Nation is unbelievable. Actually, the whole entire state of Washington is so kind and so good from the east side of the state to the west side of the state it, and everywhere in between. Um, we feel the love, we feel the support, the texts, the messages. It's, it's unbelievable. and. I really can't say thank you enough. Mm -hmm. It's certainly going to be a powerful moment when they lift the Cougar flag right before kickoff here at 8 o'clock. We'll have much more from Kim coming up on Krem2 News at 6 o'clock, where she'll talk more about the Helinski Hope Foundation and the training that foundation is providing for student athletes right here on WCU campuses. It's good stuff. We'll hear more coming up at 6. Yeah, amazing work that they've been doing. With all that going on, it's like the game is almost an afterthought. Right. But we'll get into the action in a way we always enjoy doing. We're bringing in our buddy Jason Gesser. Come on in, let's talk some football. It's time. It's time. Always a blast catching up with the former Coup QB. Just knowing what it's like at this point in the season. You have a game obviously under your belts, but when you get to be in front of those thousands of streaming fans for the first time, what is it like in that home locker room getting ready to come out and do your thing? It's something, it's something that you, uh, it's hard to explain. It's, it's, it's really special. It's, it's something about the brotherhood, the family, the team and knowing that you're running out there for all your alumni, all your fans, people that have been there for year after year supporting this program. And it kind of gets you to realize, hey, it's not just about us and Rocco, it's about a lot of other people. And it brings that special moment to you. So running out of the locker room for the first time onto the field here in Martin Stadium, uh, a lot of first time for a lot of these guys, um, especially in starting roles, it's going to be uh, something that they're going to remember for a long time. We're used to the home opener also being the season opener. This is the first time since 2014 that they didn't start the season here. 2013, they were on the road. So they got one under their belts, yep. and it was an impressive one. What did you see from the team? Because going into Wyoming against that club, nothing was going to come easy, and you look at the final score, awfully impressive what they did. Well, I'll say this. From a, from a coach's perspective, that game could not have gone any more perfect. They, 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 they couldn't have stripped that much. On the road, a very good team. The team is here competing in the Mountain West Championship. The uh, team has a high return load of defense. He has some adversity early on with your quarterback and your offense. Uh, bounce back in the second half. Your defense made some adjustments at halftime, over, over pursuing on some runs. Started filling the gaps better, not over pursuing. Good to play the defensive coordinator, made some great adjustments. And going to finish the game off like that on the road in the hostile environment in Miami. Um, you could have asked for a better beginning in the season. So, things that I noticed. Offensive line did a great job playing together. Three of the guys up front, they did a good job juggling together. We are very talented in the receivers. We are very talented. And it's, it's 
far as guarding the Michigan goes, he was able to manage the game. We saw him in the second half distribute that ball to his playmakers for them more than five. Defensively, we have the horses to make it happen. And Tracy Clay, I love his aggressiveness. I think it's going to be really good for us to see. I wanted to ask you more about Gardner this year because that was the big question going into the season. Who would the quarterback be and then how would they perform? For all intents and purposes, he was phenomenal. Had that one interception in the first half, but rallied and obviously put together a great performance. From a quarterback's perspective, what did you see? I saw him I saw him a little tentative early on. I saw him a little gun-shy. Timing was off in the first half. Uh, but then I saw him get comfortable in the second half. And starting to figure out, I can take my one-on-one -on -one matchups on the outside, figuring out where to go, get that rhythm down as a quarterback. And he has the maturity, maturity to go and pull that off. That's the one thing I saw. Um, he's a little more versatile. He can move a little bit better than Luke Falk or guys in the past. <laughs> Nothing against Luke, but but uh, he can create some uh, some defensive issues by doing that. So I, I think that we're going to see him get more and more comfortable quarter after quarter, game after game. That's going to fit very well for us tonight, San Jose State, next week, Eastern, and then going to conference play. I did want to ask you just about how, how this game will be different and, and the mood about it will be so different because the guy that guys in that locker room expected to play with this season is not around. Do you have any sort of feel on, on how they're doing from that standpoint and, and what the night will be like for them from that perspective? Well, I mean, I think we got to look at it in a perspective of they're reminded and they're around it every day, all day. We're coming in from the outside and we get a sample of it every once in a while. So I think because of that, because of how well um, our athletic department and the university has supported not just them, but all the student athletes, because it didn't affect everybody, not just all the student athletes, but all the students as well too. And so that was the number one concern and being able to provide them with that piece of continue to know what the, what the situation is, but at the same time, still moving forward. And that's the one thing, and it's healthy to move forward. It's nothing to say that we're ever gonna forget him or anything like that. We're always gonna remember Tyler and what he did here. But as far as a team being around it every single day, I think that they've been anxious for this game to come out here and to have the parents come out there and raise a the flag. They want that to happen. They wanna go and celebrate Tyler in this fashion. And I think that that's gonna give them a big energy boost today and really push them to a, to a big victory tonight. Jason, appreciate the time as always. Enjoy the game. You. Mark Hanrahan and myself will have more for you coming up on Creme 2 News at 6. Back to you guys in the studio.